So, part eight of the breakdown of the F1 show special, this um, hour and 13 minute long video that Sky Sports F1 created a month after Abu Dhabi with the purpose of validating it, okay? Convincing the fans that are still kicking off on social media about the fraud to move on from it and, oh, what's being done about it? So we're 36 minutes, 53 seconds in. The whole thing isn't all about that because the last, say, 10 or 15 minutes they're talking about the 2022 season and the new cars that are going to be introduced. I think they've got Anthony Davidson telling us that he'd been to Mercedes and he'd been on the simulator and it was all great because, you know, that simulator was simulating that that car was going to be bouncing up and down and smashing people's backs up as it was smashing up and down the road. Yeah, that, that simulator that's also good. The sim. Oh, it's looking good in the sim because that's really useful, isn't it? Anyway, let's uh, carry on with the show and um, see what, what other lies that they are telling the world in this hour, 12, 13 minute long special. Hello and welcome back to the this F1 show special where we're looking back at one of the most controversial ends to a season in the history of the sport. In the week following the title decider, an understandably disillusioned Toto Wolff faced the world's press. This is what he had to say when he was asked whether he would speak to the race director. I'm not interested. Here he is, old Toto, with his uh, GCSE drama monologue. The drama, look at that, look at that. Is the, uh, the black attire and uh look at the backdrop to this incredible conversation with michael massey what he has the the decisions that have been taken in the last four minutes of this race have dropped have dropped lewis hamilton of a deserved deserved world championship the his driving in the last four races, particularly in the last four races, was faultless. He had a commanding lead on Sunday in Abu Dhabi from the get-go. He, he won the start and he never gave the lead away again. Well, he did. He did because uh, your shit pit stop strategy. The one where, although he was on medium tyres compared to Max, who started the race on soft, and then Max pitted, and you pitted Lewis two laps later, when all of the other runners on medium compound tyres ran for a further six or eight laps, because that's what the medium tyre is capable of doing, you didn't do that. You pitted Lewis almost immediately to cover off Red Bull that way, rather than run your own strategy. But in doing so, that brought Lewis back on track behind the second Red Bull of Perez. That put Lewis in danger. You saw the sort of driving he had to do for that erratic stuff that Perez was doing and how much time he then lost by being stuck behind him due to your shit strategy. Now, what was that all about? What was that all about? Was that all part of the show as well, Toto? Was that all part of manufacturing drama? Because I don't believe in the authenticity of any of this. Because that decision made no sense whatsoever. If you start the race on mediums, why throw away the advantage of being able to run a longer stint when the other other cars on soft? It's it's gone from soft tyres, Max Verstappen has, to hard compound tyres. You're on mediums. Are you telling me that the medium shouldn't be quicker than hard compound tyres? And you've just Switch Lewis onto hards when he could have, could have gone another six or eight laps on mediums. Could have waited until Perez had pitted so that Perez was not in the equation. And then that would be fine. What Was Max catching Lewis when Lewis was still on their mediums and Max was on that new set of hard tyres? Was What was the gap before Max went in? What margin did you have? But what did you do? Same as normal. Shit pit stop strategy jeopardizing him and robbing him in the last lap of the race is in, is unacceptable that's why from a personal standpoint from a professional standpoint 
I cannot my my values, my sense of integrity just isn't <laughs> compatible to the decisions that have that have been made on on Sunday. Oh, and it is up to the FAA to decide. Why is it not pause on me? My personal values. Let's 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 just replay that. I curse was going mental. I didn't know what it was doing. Compatible to the decisions that have that have been made on on Sunday. And it is up to the FAA to that have values. My my values, my sense of integrity, just isn't compatible. Bollocks, Toto Wolf. Your values are entirely money orientated. Toto, the billionaire. Thought you could have got a decorator in there to sort that shit out that's behind you. Um, all you care about is money, Toto. The value of all of Formula One has increased due to the extra interest in it. By calling out the corruption, then you'd have risked that. You didn't do that, did you, Toto? You kept quiet. You didn't expose the level of corruption that's there. You've got the resources with which to do so. You're a billionaire. You've got plenty of money. You've got your own broadcasting station. That being Mercedes as an entity has the ability to broadcast to a global audience. They've got the funding to be able to do it, to, to go via a mainstream broadcaster to do it. They've got enough of an online following to actually put a message out that will then get parroted by everybody else. As soon as you put this interview out, it can go global. You can expose the truth. You never have. You've remained silent. You've hid the corruption and you've seen your wealth increase. You got angry, you got you pretended you were angry by defending the FIA at the um what was it, the Las Vegas Grand Prix when a manhole cover came loose and oh oh the FIA are brilliant. Yeah? You liked that, didn't you? But you don't have the balls to check well, it's not about that, is it? It's nothing to do with having the balls, is it? It's to do with the integrity. Because it doesn't matter whether your your gender is whether you've got the integrity to do what's right. But you're pretending you're here, you know, in your little outfit there, staged little drama, pretending to the world. To the decisions that have that have been made on on Sunday. And it is up to the FAA to decide going forward how these decisions, how these situations can be avoided. Expect. It's up to the FIA to decide how these situations can be avoided. You've got an entirely corrupt governing body. They broke the rules of the sport. So ahead of them breaking the rules of the sport, F1 TV created the narrative. Sky Sports lied about the rules, creating the narrative. The FIA broke the rules of the sport with their race control. Massey and the 10 personnel in race control broke the rules of the sport. Mercedes then appealed to the stewards. Toto Wolf didn't attend that appeal. Instead, he sent in a so-called barrister that Mercedes had taken to the track. Now, why would you do that? Why would you take a barrister to a Grand Prix? Is this all part of the contrivance? Is this all part of the show? What was preconceived about this? And apparently later that evening, Toto was partying like it was... 1994. Who knows, Toto? Who knows? Um, the commission to not only uh, come up with words, but actually, um, but with actions. And we will hold them accountable for the action. You'll hold them accountable. Yeah, how's that going for you, Toto? You've, have you held them accountable? Because we cannot continue um, in a sport that um, is meant to be sport followed by entertainment and not the other way around. But you are. But you are, aren't you? you you're continuing. Why is that? Is it because it's worth a lot of money to you and it's a money-making machine for you and therefore you are continuing because all you care about 
is money. You know, this Red Bull car that is over budget when they developed it, so therefore illegal and therefore built upon that year on year, you know, because it started from a faster point. So when you develop that car, it gets faster and faster and faster because it's already got a head start on everybody else. Yeah, that's that's what you're competing in. But we cannot continue in this if it's going to be like that. But you are continuing in it, Toto. You are continuing. Why is that? That we are held ransom by ad hoc decisions in every field, be it technical or sport. And therefore, there needs to be clear measures in place before the start of the season. There are. They're, they're all defined rules and regulations. They're all there before the start of the season. You know, things like cost cap. This is your budget. This is what you've got to spend. If you exceed that, there's going to be penalties. Ross Braun would tell us, you will lose your titles. You know, clearly defined measures. Clearly defined regulations. If the safety car is deployed, these are the procedures that are carried out. Clearly defined. They're already there. You're telling us there needs to be. Well, they're already there. So every driver, every team, and the fans understand what's on and what is not on. We believe. Yeah, but you're not interested in that truly, are you? Okay, because your presentation teams, your contracted broadcasters, don't educate the fans. They do the opposite of that. They lie to the fans to hype up the show. That's not educating the fans. The majority of Formula One fans do not understand the safety car rules in the manner that I've articulated them. I've got a platform that I've had to try to build on YouTube, which has got less than 2,000 people that view it. And that's all I can reach when I explain to them the clear mechanics of the safety car rule. Your contracted broadcasters reached an audience of 108 million. It's a large difference there. And of those 108 million, how many understand the safety car rule? Well, they don't. Because what you did, you didn't tell them the safety car rules. You didn't tell them what needs to happen and what the impact of it is and how it affects each of the drivers and why they need to do what they need to do. Instead, you go, oh, safety car. What's going to happen now? Are they going to let the lapped cars through? Which they have to do. How long will they wait? And they have to give them at least a lap, a further lap of that safety car before, you know, before racing can resume, after the lap that they've been released on. Will they resume racing with the lapped cars in situ? And they'll all get blue flush. Totally fictitious situation which can't occur. But the fans need to know. That's what you're telling us, Toto. But the fans aren't being told that because they're being lied to by the sport. The contracted broadcaster is lying to them. Contracted to lie to them. What's going on there? I believe we had a very strong case. And if you look at it from the legal side, um, if it would have been judged in a regular court, it is almost guaranteed that we would have won. Okay. So why didn't you take it to court? Yeah. If you know that you'd have won, why didn't you take it to court? Oh, because by taking it to court, you'd have exposed them as being corrupt and therefore you'd have devalued the sport. And your third of a share in the Mercedes team would have been worth less. So if that third of a if the Mercedes team's worth three billion pounds, three billion dollars, whatever it is, that means your share is one billion. Oh, but if the sport gets exposed as being corrupt then that's going to mean a loss of global viewership and that's going to devalue the sport as a whole and devalue each of the values of each of those teams, which means that Toto's billion pound asset, his third ownership, all oh, that might reduce down to just 600 million. Oh, we can't be having that, can we, Toto? Let's just not take this to court, shall we? Let's not take it to court. It's in everybody's interests financially just to sweep this under the carpet and make a video wearing your, your little black outfit there. But your Susie likes you in that, doesn't she? But the problem with the ICA is um, the way it's structured. 
the FIA can't really mark their own homework. No, you demand that they do. This is a legal process. You are supposed to be a court. If you are a corrupt court, I'll call you out for being a corrupt court. You are here to determine the difference between right and wrong in the context of this scenario. This is what has happened. This is what was done. There is no way you can validate this. So if you attempt to validate it, if you attempt to do it wrong, I'll show you as being corrupt. And we'll get you fuckers struck off as well. That's how you deal with this. Because that's how it's going to be dealt with. And there is a difference between being right and obtaining justice. <laughs> There's a difference between being right and obtaining justice. Really? Is that what you're trying to condition people with that belief? A difference between being right and obtaining justice. Because if something unjust has occurred, you have to fight for justice. You have to fight. You cannot be fobbed off with being told, oh, the system means that it's impossible for you to get justice. No. That's a corrupt system then, isn't it? That's a corrupt system. And that corruption needs to be challenged and eradicated. Who is that system operating in favour of? Who is it serving? Is it serving those with wealth? Those with wealth and influence. Those who are willing to pay the most amount of money to get the decision that they want. Is that justice? Well, if it's not justice, then that court isn't effective, is it? It's a corrupt court. If it can't assess the details of the case with particular regard to the details of the case and the particular circumstances and rule on those, then it's a corrupt court. And when there's a clear right and a clear wrong, it's not even, it's not even an argument. It's simple. We decided together with Luis to protest, to launch the appeal and to withdraw the appeal. As you can imagine, not only for him. And we decided to, to, to launch the appeal and then withdraw the appeal. That makes perfect sense. Perfect sense, Toto. But also for us as a team, um, it was terrible to um, be confronted with a decision that decided the outcome of the World Championship. I wonder if you've uh, stood in front of all your, whatever it is, 2,000 staff that work for the Mercedes Formula One team and uh, give them this bullshit presentation, Toto, you know, lied to them about the true reality of all this and, you know, you as the, the boss, they, they, they believe it. wonder how many of the Mercedes employees have bought the bullshit and they work for you they're, they've got you know that they, they they're in the sport and yet they still probably don't realize the true extent of this because you, you who do you lie to you lying to us all but nobody of us neither him or us want to win a world championship in the courtroom it's not winning a world championship in the courtroom so why would you even Voice it like that. You you won that world championship by winning the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, which you did. That race was a safety car finish. You were in the lead of that race. Prior to the accident, you were 12 seconds in the lead. That accident neutralised racing to the point where it had to be a safety car finish. You're the race winner. That's not winning it in the courtroom. That's winning it. So don't try and put this slant on it oh he only won that one in the courtroom no you won it on track you won it by accomplishing what needed to be accomplished with one lap to go they changed the rules of the sport to make the other guy win that's not winning it in the courtroom that's being cheated out of it so you rectify that Chris and i are disillusioned at the moment yeah, you know? I can see just how disillusioned you are because you've put your black outfit on and you're standing in front of your concrete. Not disillusioned for, of the sport. We love the sport. 
with every bone in our or is he is he lying down on the floor who knows who knows our body and we love it because it's so because the stopwatch never lies but if we break that fundamental principle of spotting fairness and authenticity of the spot that suddenly the stopwatch doesn't become relevant anymore because we are exposed to random decision making that is authenticity what, and random decision making well, tell us about your pit stop tell us about lewis's pit stop you pitted him a lap or two after max when he was on the mediums and could have gone for another six or eight laps tell us about the authenticity of that it's clear that you fall out in that you may fall out of, uh, of love with the, with that you start to question. Indeed, we do start to question Toto. We do start to question. Absolutely right. If all the work that you have been putting in, all the sweat, tears, and blood can actually be demonstrated in terms of bringing the best of possible performances on track, because it can be taken away randomly. So it's going to take a long time for us to digest what has happened on Sunday. I don't think we will ever come over it. So Toto, you know, you, you've given us this lovely presentation there, you know, very dramatic. Have you explained Okay, what the the situation was because you'll have been aware of what the, the world's media has presented to the world. And that was this notion of a human error. Okay, uh, Michael Massey, they focused on just five of eight cars uh, being let through and that being the crux of the problem. Um, they didn't focus on the fact that the safety car should have done a further lap of that track meaning it was a safety car finish, meaning that Lewis Hamilton would have been a, an eight-time world champion. Can you tell us why the safety car has to remain on track for that extra lap? Because if you did that and explain the implications to all of the competitors in, in the manner that I do, then that would expose to the world the actual magnitude of the so-called error. That would show people that actually it wasn't an error because Michael Massey knew those implications had he has, as he had demonstrated at four other Grand Prix where he kept the safety car on track for a further lap beyond that mandatory lap. But if you actually explained that to the casual viewer, what the purpose was and what Massey's knowledge of it was, then it obliterates the notion of it being just an error under pressure. Because you, you, you can see Oh, this is the impact it has on all these competitors. So you can't do that. So you don't do it. Third place couldn't challenge for a top two position. You've separated out two competitors in a multi-competitor event and just set them off so that only one of those two can win. Well, that's fixing it, isn't it? That's fixing an event. That's not allowed. That needed to be exposed, exposed the sport for that's what they've done. Oh, you're not allowed to do that. A competitor competing in the top 10 was stopped from challenging for the position ahead of him when all the others were available, able to do that. So, well, not all the others, actually. Second could challenge first. Third couldn't challenge anything ahead of it. Fourth could challenge for third. Fourth, fifth, well, that had a car in between it, but fifth was on these fresh tyres as well. So they were that fast, they could even pass the, the car that was in between them and fourth and still get past it. And so could sixth, because the two Alpha Tauris, they both got onto the fresh soft compound tyres. Miraculous, you couldn't make it up, could you? It's all being part of the Red Bull decision-making machine. Um, so they knew to change onto soft compound tyres for the restart that shouldn't have restarted. And they got past uh, Mick Schumacher, who was in between them and Bottas. And then they got past Bottas as well on that last lap. Two Alpha Tauris were able to blitz past a Mercedes 
And they're Alpha Tauris, they're not Red Bulls. You know? And people are blaming Lewis Hamilton for not being able to defend on that last lap. But Lando Norris in seventh, he was left two thirds of a lap behind Gasly. He wasn't allowed to do that. These are the skewed outcomes. This is what Massey's so called error produced. But you, Toto, the, the, the team principal of Mercedes, expert of Formula One, broadcasting to the world now. Can't tell the world that, can you? Oh, no, that would be too much of an exposure. That would expose the sport too much. Instead, we have to put on this dramatic performance, tell everybody how disillusioned we are and that we're going to try and retain our dignity by doing this. But we're all a little bit richer out of it, aren't we? We've all got a little bit more money. We're all now multi-billionaires rather than just billionaires. Cha-ching. That's not possible. Okay, Martin, let's start with the, the sentiment of that. Could you see a scenario, same question as I asked to, to Dane and Johnny before the break, whereby as a result of what's happened and what might happen next, that Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton do pull out of the sport? Absolutely not. Don't buy any of it, to be honest. I'm sure Toto is being asked by Lewis, what are you doing about this? Um, Formula One is fantastically successful for the Mercedes-Benz brand. Lewis is 37 years old. It's all about the brand, isn't it? It's all about the money. Okay, so they're not, they don't care about really what has taken place. It's all about image, about brand. Do they want to be involved in something that's shown to be corrupt? So they've protected it. They've not shown it up to be corrupt. So you've been complicit with the corruption by not exposing it. We know he's driving still at his peak, incredibly determined and competitive. Uh, he'll be back. And I'm a little bit... You just describe his driving as determined and competitive. It was a masterclass. You show me another driver in living memory that has had to contend with contesting Grand Prix against a, a competitive rival that's intent on driving them off the track being willing to crash into them and you've got to drive in them conditions where you've got to avoid that and still find ways of overtaking him whilst not getting taken out in the process of overtaking him that's a different level that's a different level and if you actually look at the relative competitiveness of those cars in 2021 you look at the style of overtakes that Hamilton had to do. They had to be late braking manoeuvres or they had to be slipstreaming a car down the straight and then you only just got that competitive advantage as you're going into the braking zone. You compare that with 2022, 2023, 2024, that Red Bull car, that Red Bull car doesn't have to outbreak anything. As soon as you get onto a straight, that Red Bull car just opens the DRS flap and it's just straight by you. It, it's past you halfway down a straight and it's already 50 metres ahead by the time it gets to the, the, the braking zone for the corner. It's, no, it's not even a contest. You don't have to have any driving skill to make them sorts of passes. That's just performance advantage of the car. Lewis Hamilton had to use driving skill. Even when he had his so-called spicy engine that they like to call. Oh, he had a spicy engine. Really? Really? That spicy? Look at the performance difference between that and the Red Bull. And that Max would then run him off the track at Brazil. Max would then run him off the track at Saudi. Max would brake test him at Saudi. Max would again lunge lap one of Abu Dhabi. Oh, but Lewis has got the spicy engine. Right. Right, so what engine have Red Bull got since 2022, 2023, 2024? Is, is something spicy with that? Is there something that seems to give the Red Bull car this ridiculous performance advantage over everything else? Is that legal? At a point in time where the sport agreed a freeze on engine development to help Red Bull. And then Honda decided to withdraw 
but then re-emerge. What were they doing in the downtime old Honda when they re-emerged at the Japanese Grand Prix? Who knows? Who knows? I'm sure it's all legal. Sure it's all legal. Anyway, that will do for this one. We'll do the ninth part next when we get to see more of Brundle. And now we can see that it's uh, Craig Slater and the village idiot Ted Kravitz that have joined the show to tell us what they think. See you next time.